Hi, I'm Shannon Albert from WDWPrepSchool.com and today I wanted to talk to you about 13 different things to keep in mind when planning a Disney World trip right now. Let's go! So one of the things that stuck out to us on the last trip was how much things had changed. So we've spent eight years developing planning methods and strategy and articles and so much content and so much of that is different now. And we actually made a list through our trip of things that were different to keep in mind. And today I want to list them all out for you. Let's start with number one, which is the resort that you choose matters more than ever. In the past, a lot of people have gone with resorts purely based on cost. And they would say, well, I'm gonna be in the parks all day anyway, so the resort doesn't matter. And that is very different now because the park hours are so limited that you end up spending a lot more time in your room. And if you're going to be at the hotel more, you also want to make sure you have dining options. So for that reason, I would look very carefully at your resort choice and make sure it's a place that you don't mind hanging out and a place that has dining options that you won't run out of during your trip. The second thing to consider is that renting a car might make sense even if you never have before. I don't like renting cars. I don't like driving. I've always been super happy to let Disney do it for me but renting a car is what I'll be doing for the foreseeable future. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that the capacity on Disney transportation is greatly reduced. So even if you're in line for a bus and a bus pulls up and you don't think there's that many people ahead of you, there's a good chance that you won't be able to get on that bus because they have limited the capacity on buses to 25 passengers maximum, as opposed to I think 72 is the typical capacity. So you actually will be waiting quite a while during busier times of day, like first thing in the morning. And um, also just being inside with lots of people carries an inherent risk. That's even with, you know, plexiglass dividing sections on the buses and everyone's wearing masks, you know, just being inside has its own inherent risk. And so there's that. Um, but also there is the factor that in our experience, the people that got to the parks first were the ones who drove. And most of the days we drove, so we were the first people in the park. There was one day at Epcot that we were like the fifth people in the park that day and no buses had even arrived. So it not only has reduced capacity and safer, but it might get you there first if you're into that sort of thing. To go along with renting a car, I did want to point out a mistake that we made is that we used a rental car company that had a shuttle that you had to take from the airport to the rental car company. It was a third the price, I think, as the companies that were inside the terminal. So um, that's why we did it. But the shuttles carry an inherent risk because there's very few guidelines. They just pack people in. A lot of people don't wear masks. We ended up taking a lift instead of the rental car company shuttle. So all the savings that we had in going with this company kind of dwindled. Um, so I would suggest if you rent a car at the airport, then that you use one of the companies that are in the terminal and even better if they're the, one of the ones that allows you to go right to the car or check into the kiosk or something like that. So that is my suggestion if you're renting a car at the airport. Number three is to carefully plan where you're going to eat. Now this has always been part of our planning process. We've always suggested that you make your plans and then choose your dining to go along with it so that you weren't going all over the place to chase down a dining reservation. But now that's even more important because so much has changed. One thing that has changed with dining is that there are fewer options. A lot of places are closed and so they aren't uh, available. So you want to make sure that you are paying attention to what is even open. And if it requires a dining reservation, then you can make those 60 days ahead of time or you can of course do a quick service or things that don't require reservations. And although the capacity is way lower at Disney World as a whole, so are the restaurants. So you might think, oh, it'll be easy to get a reservation and it might, but keep in mind that the restaurant capacity is greatly reduced, so it may not be quite as easy as you thought. So make sure you snag those as soon as you know that you want them for your trip. When it comes to dining, you may also want to think about restaurants that have outdoor seating options. And that's because outdoor is safer than being indoor. And so whenever we had the option, we would ask to sit outside. So we had a really great dinner at Paddlefish 
They have indoor and outdoor. We requested to be outdoor. Luckily, a storm had just passed, so we were able to go outside. But that's definitely something to think about when you're planning your dining, if that's important to you. Another thing to think about when planning is that off-site might be an okay option right now. So in the past, on-site resorts have presented lots of perks. So you would have extra magic hours. You could use resort airline check-in for your bags. You could make fast pass reservations before the, you know, all at the same time before the general public could. And so there were all these perks and really, really good benefits to staying on site. But most of those are gone now. And if you're going to have a car, like I already suggested, then staying off site becomes even easier because you will want to have a car if you're not on site, especially. So this might be a good time to consider it because you can have a place with more square footage. Maybe it costs less. And if you choose to dine in more than you have in the past, a lot of those offsite options also have kitchens in addition to just having more space than a regular hotel room. So definitely somebody to consider if it had never crossed your mind before. If you do stay offsite, one of the only downsides, and it's not probably a deal breaker, is that you won't be able to make all your dining reservations at once. So on-site guests can 60 days before their trip begins, make it their dining reservations for their whole trip. But if you're staying off-site, you'll be able to only make it 60 days before the day you want to eat. Dining reservations are fairly you know, open right now, so hopefully that's not too big of a deal, but just something to think about. Number five, if you do stay on-site, you might want to consider booking a vacation package instead of booking a room only hotel room and getting your ticket somewhere else. And that's because if you book a package, which includes both tickets and hotel together, you can use a $200 deposit to get it and then pay it off before your trip. You will then have your tickets that you can use to make park passes. And then if anything happens where you don't get to go on the trip, getting a refund or canceling is much easier than if you buy things a la carte. One of the questions that we've been inundated with is, I bought my tickets to such and such a source, so now what do I do? Well, I don't know what you do because all companies are different and frankly, tickets often are not refundable if you buy them on their own. So highly recommend if you want the most flexibility and you're staying on site to book a package so that you can just pay the $200 down and have the ability to cancel later if you need to. Number six is to not make plans with other people during your trip. Now this might be a very common thing, something that we certainly do a lot. And that is, oh, your friends are going to be there at the same time or families are coming in from all different places. Let's do stuff together. And that becomes much trickier now because it it means you're, you know, increasing your chances for contamination, for sickness. And that was something we really had to think a lot about and it made it difficult. So for instance, I have a Patreon with hundreds of, of members and we try to do meetups every single trip. And in the past, we've done it in dining spaces, you know, let's have a drink or let's sit down at a restaurant and have ice cream or whatever. And we actually had made plans for this last trip with that, with the dining reservation. And I realized we don't need 12, 15, 18 people coming together in a dining reservation, masks off, sitting super close. And so we scrapped those plans and we found an outdoor space that had seats far apart that we could put on masks so that we won't, you know, hurt each other in the process in case someone's sick. But that also applies to just like personal groups. You know, you don't want to meet up with lots of people from all over the country. And if one person happens to be sick and you have your masks off and you're having a drink or something to eat, then the whole group can possibly be at risk. So I would scrap the meetup plans for now, unless you can come up with a plan like we did, which allows you to space out outside masks on for optimal safety. Number seven is before your trip, make sure you understand the park hours because they are wildly different than they used to be. So the first thing to know is that every park is currently scheduled to be open for 10 hours a day. And that might sound like a lot, but it's, it's a lot less than it used to be. And the opening and closing times are staggered to allow Disney transportation to accommodate people as effectively as possible, as efficiently as possible. So you have Animal Kingdom opening at eight, you have Magic Kingdom opening at nine, you have Hollywood Studios opening at 10 and Epcot at 11. So yes, rope drop, it, park opening is at 11 at Epcot and the closing time is 10 hours later. So of course it is staggered as well, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, and that is super strange if you have traveled before because usually it's they're open early, up, open late, and that's just not the case. So you may just think about that because if, if a park has an 11 o'clock opening, maybe you have time to sleep in or to have breakfast that day 
or if a park has an early close, then maybe you schedule dinner in Disney Springs or something like that. But it's just very different than it used to be. So make sure you understand that before you head out. Number eight is that the parks are sometimes opening early. So those park hours I just said, they may or may not actually apply. And this is where having a car comes in handy because either Disney transportation might start picking people up a little bit later and get you there at the official park opening, but people that drive or in some cases, some parks you can walk to and they will actually get in early. Now our experience was different day by day. The goal for Disney is to not have a lot of people congregating. So they don't want a lot of people um, waiting at the front of a park. They don't want a lot of people waiting to get into any one space. So they're kind of making sure people can move along. They are also using transportation as a way to stagger crowds. So everything's kind of, I think they call it pulsed. So everything's kind of um, being managed on the transportation side. However, once you get to the parks, if you are early, as we were most days, they often do let you in. And once you're in, sometimes you can go wait in a line, a socially distanced line, like we did at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, for instance, or sometimes they'll actually just let you start writing. So we were inside Magic Kingdom 40 minutes before the opening time one day, and we just got to start writing rides right away. So it can vary, but it is good to know if you're an early person that sometimes the parks actually do open early and sometimes you get to ride before park opening. Number nine is to prepare for the queues at Disney World. Now, this was one that surprised us um, because until you've seen it in person, you may not totally understand it, but because the queues are set up for, to have people spaced six feet apart, at least six feet apart, that means the lines often go out the door even with a short wait time. And so you need to prepare for this because you will be out in the sun. Disney World was designed to have indoor queues. Uh, Disneyland has a lot more, can you tell I'm pointing to Disneyland? That is West. Um, so Disneyland has a lot of outdoor queues or they're like covered, but not indoor queues because the weather there is so mild. Disney World clearly is not. It's hot, it rains a lot, etc. But now what we find ourselves in the position of doing is standing outside to wait even for low wait times. So you need to prepare for this by, in our opinion, the best ways to have an umbrella. Everyone needs to have an umbrella. I just ordered another one that's lightweight and small that I can easily keep in my purse because that will protect you from the sun, which often beats down when you're out on that pavement and obviously the rain. You don't want to be outside with your mask on, getting wet. You need to prepare and cover yourself. We also always made sure that we had water on us when we got in line because you just need to really protect yourself. One funny thing that would surprise us at a Disney World queue was that it made it easy to kind of come and go to the bathroom. So if you are, depending on the queue, um, sometimes one person can be waiting and the other person can scoot off to the bathroom and come back, something we've never been able to do before. And that really varies by attraction, depending on how it's set up, but you know, we're making use of our waiting time. But no matter what you do, just make sure you're ready for the way the cues are working right now. Number 10, mask breaks are a must. Now, this was something we had to learn very quickly. In the hot Florida sun, I actually had to learn to drink water over the years. I used to just not drink that much water. I used to just go, 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 and you'll never guess what happened. I got dehydrated, made me very sick. So I've gotten very used to having lots of water and you just drink it throughout the day, stay hydrated, always have water with you. But when you have a mask on, it is harder to do that. You can't drink on the go. So what we suggest doing is if you have plans, like touring plans or you know plans for your trip, that you build in mask breaks about every 60 to 90 minutes. And the wait times on the rides are so low that it's so much easier just to take you know five or 10 minutes to sit down somewhere away from people, take your mask off and drink some water. So. Highly recommend that you think about water breaks so you're not dehydrated and so you can get that water in, in between rides and cavalcades and all the fun stuff that's in the parks. Number 11 is to prepare for the new security systems. Now, Disney World in the past has had security guards that would open your bags and search through it and all that kind of stuff, but it's not like that because that would be too much contact with other people. They have metal detectors now and it makes it easier in some ways, but what we found to be the very easiest thing was to separate our metals into their own bag, much like you would separate liquids at the airport. And they will tell you over and over again, you don't need to worry about separating out everything, just umbrellas, just metal water bottles. But our experience was 
that a lot of things would set it off, even if they told us it didn't. So I have a little bag in my purse that I would put everything in my fuel rods, my inhaler, a pack of Altoids. Um, phones don't seem to set it off, so I kept that one with me, but just all metal separated. And that way, when you go through security, you can put your little metal bag in the container and then you can walk through the metal detector. And usually that will be the fastest and easiest way to do it. Number 12 is to prepare for the fact that not everything is open. Some resorts are closed, a lot of restaurants are still closed, not all the rides are open. And so you just need to, don't be disappointed. The one area we found this to be the most obvious was on the boardwalk. Now there is this idea that if Disney World's not busy, does that make it creepy? And we actually didn't feel creepy about anything except for the boardwalk. It was just eerily quiet with hardly anything open. So be prepared for that. Make sure you double check everything beforehand so that you know what to expect. And number 13, the last one on the list is to prepare for Disney Springs to be busy. Now, the reasons for this are varied, we think. Um, one of those is those restricted park hours. People are looking for things to do, so they're going to Disney Springs. The fact that it is um, a casual, like, shopping, eating, drinking area makes it much more likely that people are gonna have their masks off and walking around. Now, there are rules in Disney World that say you have to be stationary and eat, but things are more loosey-goosey in Disney Springs. So. I would personally avoid the shops because even though they're counting people going in and out and they're trying to limit it, it was still a lot of people when we dipped in to see how it was going and we, we dipped into multiple shops to check it out and just, just much busier than we were comfortable with. Our preferred thing to do was to stick to the areas that weren't quite so busy and to maybe just go for a dining reservation. We were at Paddlefish and we asked to eat outside. That worked great. That was okay for us, but I just want you to be aware because it's shocking to be, we on the very same day we were on the boardwalk and it was eerie. We were in Disney Springs and it felt overwhelmingly busy. So the crowds are just kind of hard to predict there, but just keep that in mind if you have Disney Springs time in your plans. All right. so. I hope that's helpful. We are certainly having to relearn everything all over again and learn a new system, but this is definitely part of it. If you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.